we're in this mess because society has lost sight of what's most important. What matters most to me is my faith and my family. And I know I'm not the only one who believes that way. So we're joining together as God-fearing men and women to take the light into the darkness. Folks, it's the uh, it's January 30th. We're burning off a little bit of Bermuda grass, a lot of leaves in this timber. Trying to trying to promote new growth, so we can come back in here maybe and plant something for the spring and get these deer off to a good start this year. Got several people here helping me. Been working for a few days, putting in some good fire lines, and it's burning off pretty good. We're supposed to get a good rain tomorrow, so we can get all burnt today and get it put out tonight. Tomorrow it'll all be done. Pro Staffer Daniel Arms has this little slice of heaven. It's this secluded 110 acres in southern Oklahoma, and he gets great results off that 110 acres every year with him and his family. Well, after lots of effort last year in food plots, control burns, just, just overall uh, management practices, I was really excited about the 2014 season. Uh, started getting some real good velvet pictures, some bucks coming in, had them on a real good pattern. I was just sure hoping they'd stay on a pattern so we could get on one early season. Rodney, we're hunting uh, early season in Oklahoma. It's October 4th, hotter than the Dickens. Gotta be 80 plus degrees today. The wind's blowing pretty hard, but in this blind, it's still hot. All my trail cameras have got all kinds of new bucks showing up everywhere. It's uh, late morning, about 10 o'clock, 10.30. I try to sit it out through midday. It's It's been raining since about 4 o'clock this morning, so maybe it'll slack off enough and get these deer moving. The thing we 
always battle here in southern Oklahoma is these wild hogs. Uh, and when they move in, it seems like the deer just move out. And uh, sure enough, the hogs start moving in on my food plots. All right, folks, we're going to put this hog wild heavy shot to work today and this, uh, see if we can get rid of a few pigs. These pigs just come in and tear everything up. Look at all this. Pigs everywhere. Heavy shot hog wild did the trick, man. There's two massive, massive holes in the side of this pig's neck, and he just dropped like a like a rock. Okay, we knocked down this hog this morning. We've got this new Revelation X4 from Real Avid. Let's get to work on this pig. Well, with the hogs out of the way, Daniel starts getting pictures of a buck that all of us on the staff decided to name Wide Clyde. It's easy to see why we would name him Wide Clyde, and it's also easy to see why this buck jumps to the top of Daniel's hit list. Well, the wild game trail cameras are showing us that Clyde's on a really consistent pattern, so it's time to make a plan, slide in, and see if we can get him on the ground. The first encounter I had with Wide Clyde, uh, Emily, my six-year-old daughter, was with me, and uh, he came in, just wouldn't quite get in range, getting, didn't get where we needed him to, but he wasn't alerted, he wasn't spooked a bit, so uh, the next morning I was going to try it again by myself since she had to go to school. Wide Buck. Oh my gosh, Michelle seemed to nickname Wide Clyde. He was here yesterday and he was here this morning, but this cell phone and stuff is tough. I think I could have got him killed uh, yesterday and this morning if I had a cameraman, but I've got some does coming in, so I'm gonna get off of here. All right, folks, it's, um, it's about 8.45. We've let this deer sit since probably about, I think I shot him about 5.30. I just I just loaded up and went to church. I said, forget this. I'm not going to go poking around the woods. I'm going to give this deer plenty of time to lay because I didn't know, I don't know how good of a shot I made on him. So we got Weston and we got Cole, and we're going to go track this deer. And hopefully, hopefully there's a prize at the end of that blood trail. Well, here's the arrow. I found the arrow after I shot him earlier. I come out and marked the arrow with my hat. And uh, it's just covered in blood. I, I really hadn't gone any farther than this. I just wanted to let him lay down and, and give him a chance to die. So hopefully we can get on a blood trail pretty quick. Look at there, big old blood spot. It's picking up now. There's blood everywhere. Look right there. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! There he is! <laughs> he is a stud! Woo! 
Well, folks, here he is. That's a big old wide buck I've been after for a couple days. He showed up here in velvet and then disappeared for about two months. And uh, my wife and kids saw him headed to the school bus a couple days ago. And they said, oh, Dad, he's huge, he's huge, he's huge. And uh, showed him to some of the guys on, on staff, and they called him Wide Clyde. I'm satisfied. I thank the Lord for it. Um, I thank my wife and my kids for just letting me be able to do what I love. They, they, they let me take a lot of time away from my family and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now in 2014 was looking like a great year, but uh, I still had several other good bucks on camera and uh, it was just a matter of time before another one slipped up. So we go get after another one. The first big cold front of the year has come through Southern Oklahoma. These bucks have got to be on their feet. Uh, I've got a couple big hit list bucks that I'm getting pictures of pretty consistently and I'm sure hoping one of them will show up this morning. Well, Daniel didn't alert this buck at all. Actually, it just followed a doe off into the timber. So he has to wait, be patient, and see if it'll come back out so we can get a shot. I came real close to killing a pretty good deer last night. Hopefully he'll come checking on some does in this little green field this evening. Give me a chance, I'll be tagged out in Oklahoma. back this morning or not, but I'm gonna stick it out. We're right in the rut. after for oh I don't even know three four days now <sighs> 20 yards at the most I know I drilled him my wife might be upset with me tonight though we're supposed to have a date night tonight's Friday night it's it's about 5 30 right now we're supposed to we got reservations for dinner tagged out in Oklahoma baby man I, I decided to go hunting after I promised my wife we'd have a little date night tonight and we have reservations at 7 so I stuck that deer and found a pretty good blood trail and now she's going to make me wait until we get home to go try to find him so uh, it's just like last week I, I shot that deer and had to be in a big rush to hurry up and get to church so I'm sure it'll all work out so stick with us. Well folks here he is, he 
uh, he didn't go very far at all. Probably not 50 yards from where I shot him. Um, I'm happy. I'm tagged out in Oklahoma, guys. This is it. This is what it's all about. Well, what an unbelievable year for Daniel. I mean, all that hard work that he put in from control burns to food plots, battling hogs, it all ended up being worth it in the end. Satan, your kingdom must come down. You know, this life is really all about the end result as well. You know, that's what we should be striving for. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he says that I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I've kept my faith. And you know what? That's what this life is about. It's about finishing strong. And Paul said he did everything in his power to finish strong all the way to the end, and more importantly, about keeping his faith. You know, it's easy to lose sight of the end goal. It's easy to do that, especially when it comes to faith. So maybe today you're struggling with your faith. Maybe you're struggling with just life and it's worn you down. We want to encourage you, Christian, to remain strong in your faith, to finish the race, to finish it strong. And I want you to know that heaven is filled with people who are standing on the other side, cheering you on because they know it's worth it. You know, maybe today you're a Christian and maybe you're struggling or maybe you're not, but maybe you're watching today and you're saying, you know what, I, I don't have a relationship with Christ. I'm not running the race at all. I want you to know that today you can start that relationship. It can happen today. Matter of fact, Jesus is waiting on you to ask. So today, if we can help you either begin a relationship with Christ or encourage you on your current walk with Christ, we would love to do that. Go to our website, shoot us an email, go to Facebook, shoot us a message. We want to help you any way we can. We want you to know that the race of faith is worth it in the end. God bless you. We'll see you next week.